పాండి ఇట్స్ ఓకే నో ఇన్ ద కేస్ హియర్ ద ఇంటర్నెట్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ డేస్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ అన్స్టేబుల్ సో యూ విల్ బి ద కో హోస్ట్ ఇన్ ద కేస్ సంథింగ్ హ్యాపన్ యూ క్యాన్ ఇట్ విల్ బి కంటిన్యూ ఫ్రమ్ దయర్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ సో షాల్ మేక్ యూ ద కో హోస్ట్ ఫస్ట్ yes okay and uh, this program will be live streaming also yes sir and uh, youtube so what exactly is here some 10 to 15 sometimes 20 participants in the direct link yes, uh, they will be joining they are joining now and uh, live streaming uh, it will be uh, there for some more time now 2 3 days 4 days 5 days not we haven't uh, deleted any uh, live streaming video set so uh, they will be watching uh, in this subsequent days coming days and uh, now uh, you will be having a presentation with slides and uh, towards the end some discussions if it is there uh, you can participate that's all okay so how is that things at the, with a long time uh, we haven't seen we are not coming frequently to kasaragod also and that is it it is very difficult also now at least it is opened we can yes sir there are one with many many folks are pending sir we have to come to kasaragod but we don't know yeah, this time it is uh, difficult some of the things no? yes sir yes sir so where it is okay everything is okay yes sir all are fine i think those are leave i think today two days okay okay family is uh, doing well so you are working on saturday also no there saturday even sunday also we are coming in uh-huh. <laughs> we are in face kay in side la sir so no restriction sir it is anyway this where you are sitting now uh, which room sir petalaji only sir okay, okay sir. near uh, where kirtana was sitting earlier oh okay okay i understand we nicely decorated some awards and all the bags no no this <laughs> is not mine i think this is okay okay, okay. this is jo sir rooms <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> my room is pathology lab only sir we don't do sub main room okay one more went we wait and uh, yes sir uh, so that's what in the case if it is getting unstable from here you don't bother to continue there i think right slide sharing option you given la sir permission to me slide sharing. now you are a co-host now you okay. can yourself you can uh, you just keep it open uh, open in the desktop yes sir so once you start you can it is there. it is open, open. now it is there yes, sir. open so it is as such a host you are now so yes sir yes, sir. No. anyway i'll be there uh, here only yes, and then so in between some maybe 5 or 10 minutes only here and there so okay, you can sir. manage you no know? so if it is finishes i will just uh, give you a ring sir from mobile no no problem i will be around no okay, no problem. okay just most probably i will not miss just uh, i also will learn no some of the things sir sir some uh, photographs i will send to you about uh, it seems i can at crown road mm-hmm. uh, kodambelur uh, panchayat of this kasaragod district one of my friends uh, he sent to me uh, last week there he has sent uh, some photographs some six seven photographs i forgot actually when i thought i will send to you uh, somehow i forgot you know, so yes, to, whatsapp me sir i will just i will whatsapp whatsapp uh, you know just you see if it is um, yes, it is, is look, appears to be crown uh, crown yes, now it will come sir now uh, rainy season over la sir now it will uh, start that's it then but then uh, it seems it is uh, beyond the uh, uh, repair <laughs> it is no, gone sir, even, uh, crown rod little bit we can manage sir but butter yeah. comes we will do it is gone anyway just see that no? later yeah. after the class and all once you go home just see and by that time i will send to you sure, see i think uh, we will start just i will uh, tell uh, one thing that uh, my dear friends uh, in continuation of uh, last week's uh, disease management on coconuts uh, today we have a disease management phase 2 on arecanut and uh, cocoa 
uh, my young colleague, uh, Dr. R. Tava Prakash Pandian will be taking class. He is a scientist in plant pathology, uh, young blood working at uh, CPCR Regional Station Vital. So he is enough experienced also. Uh, for the past five, six years, uh, uh, experience Tava, uh, six or seven, six years, no, six years, you know, so uh, field experience also, so he will be handy in explaining uh, the required uh, details on uh, these two crops and uh, even coconut aspects, the last time we had, now, last time we were doing it with the Vinayaka sir, then in between towards the end, for five minutes, uh, we had some uh, network issue here. So some of the questions, one or two questions, he missed it. Today he asked uh, whether he can join. Then I told him that later on, no, but it will be clumsy. Later on, uh, we will have a panel discussion. So today he will not be joining. So in the case, some doubt happens. So basic things, if you know, uh, yes, you can answer. I will clear. Uh, so uh, welcome, uh, Tawa. Thank you, Please. Thank you so much. So now I will share my screen. Yeah, you can, you know, it is, I am leaving from here, yes, but, and here only, but uh, leaving from the scene. Thank, so, no. thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. It is coming. Yes, sir. Tava, it's clear. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for inviting me, for giving me this opportunity to share the uh, disease management aspects in Arikant and Coco. Okay, very good evening to all uh, friends. So mm -hmm. directly we will go to this session. Otherwise, uh, to covering two crops will be in lesser time. It is very difficult. So myself, Dr. R. Tawpraga Sapandian, working in scientist in plant pathology at CPC Vital. So coming to the importance of Arikanet. Mostly it is a uh, majorly known as a cash or profit crop in India. So we India is the largest producer as well as consumer of Arikanet. And it is having high uh, religious as well as uh, social values among the uh, Arikanet growers in India. So coming to the issues and challenges what we are facing as a Arikanet grower. So here it is a perennial crop. So if you see loss of even one farm is costing too much. And moreover, uh, the uh, current scenario of climate change, where there is an emergence of or re-emergence of pest and diseases, which minor become a major diseases, or the yeah, occurrence of new diseases through um, quarantine, and so many uh, diseases are introduced from abroad to India. So it is a climate changing scenario. The diseases and pests are primary importance. Also, mechanization of crop protection measures. Because uh, we are having shortage of skill levels, so crop protection like spraying of fungicides or insecticides or any uh, chemical, we need mechanization. We are forced to go for mechanization, uh, which, which problem is faced by the, many of the farmers. So coming to the disease diagnosis. So this just I will give you outline. So how to diagnose a disease? Actually, there are two aspects. One is we have to look for the correct symptoms. Like we have to observe proper observation of symptoms. If you confuse with the symptoms with other disorders and all, so you may mislead to, uh, to go for the wrong identification. So correct observation and record of the symptoms is very important task in this diagnosis part. Second, correct detection of pathogens associated with, associated with the symptoms. So it is like a fungi, bacteria, virus, viroids, or anything it may be, correct detection procedures, like starting from cultural, microscopic, any other methods like serological or molecular methods, whatever the methods available as per the literature. So we have to go for the correct detection of the pathogen associated with the given symptoms. So this part covers the diagnosis. So now the very important part is management aspects. So once you diagnose the disease, so the sec second part is management. Without management, it is very difficult to save the crop. So the integrated disease management is very important in this aspect. So here in my uh, presentation also, I will just highlight what are all the symptoms caused by the disease as well as the pathogen associated with as well as the integrated disease management. So I will just give you an outline. So coming to the disease profile of Arikanet, if you see Arikanet is known uh, to be infected by many diseases. 
so starting from fruit rot ground rot bud rot yellow leaf disease anabiroga inflorescence dieback and button setting leaf spot or leaf blight as well as some emerging diseases i told already re emerging and re emerging diseases due to the climate changing scenario so this this disease profile we are covering based on our indian scenario we have not covered anything uh, which is appearing in foreign country so this is indian uh, disease profile of hurricane net growing in india so one by one i will highlight it. so coming to the uh, diseases major diseases so if you see it is a, if you call it is a major diseases it is frequently occurring year by year every year in the uh, cropping system as well as causing a heavy economic damage to the growers that's we call as a major diseases the another aspect is minor diseases which of minor importance so we without management practices or with less important um, less uh, management practices we can manage that type of diseases which will not kill the palms but here the major diseases is having high importance in terms of management as well as our yield so the first is fruit rot or it is also called locally choleroga in karnataka side as well as mahali which is caused by uh, different pathogens of uh, like uh, phytophthora phytophthora you may be knowing it is a oomycetes plant pathogen so we can call like fungus like organism it is a pseudo fungi it is not earlier it was under fungal classification now due to some differences from the fungi it was separated to oomycetes classification so there are more than 100 120 different species is available like phytophthora midi palmiora heavyae depending upon the host so the naming is given depending upon the host so here in arikanet it is phytophthora midi as well as phytophthora heavyae is also reported by our uh, one of our ex director in dakshina kannada district so these two pathogens so you broadly remember it is a phytophthora disease fruit rot then the associated disease i will i would like to mention here the associated disease like once fruit rot infected once fruit rot is noticed in your garden definitely there is a chance of bud rot and crown rot will be there definitely so it is an it is a associated disease of fruit rot so the bud rot the main name itself it is clear bud will be infected and the crown rot the crown region of the crop is infected so that is also caused by the same organism then the other diseases are like inflorescence dieback one by one i will cover then anabiroga then yellow leaf disease which is uh, very very severe in our dakshina kannada district as well as some parts of kerala and some of the emerging diseases like root rot which is caused by fusarium as well as one nematode association as well as bacterial leaf uh, stripe sorry it is leaf blight or stripe disease which is recently emerging in shimoga area of karnataka so one by one i will cover so fruit rot as i already mentioned it is a prime enemy of arikanet arikanet growers so it is a most notorious disease whereas once fruit rot comes now we won't get anything so uh, the disease cycle will start like once we receive the southwest monsoon because this particular phytophthora pathogen likes moisture as well as humidity so if there is a high rainfall like southwest monsoon will start during june first week then july we will receive the symptoms so the pathogen uh, from the resting spores which is already available in the cropping system will um, uh, will germinate and it will infect the nuts so we will notice the symptoms once there is high rainfall and it will spread continuously till the monsoon season ends because there is a high prevalence of relative humidity and rainfall which favors the phytophthora growth so yield loss it is if it is even minor also we will get 50% even if it is a minor uh, attack of phytophthora also 50% yield loss will be there then you imagine it it will reach up to 90 to 100% if it is infecting uh, further via bud or crown i told already bud rot or crown rot then 100% yield loss where the palm will die so a recent survey 2018 we conducted which i told already where uh, meager amount of rainfall was received during the year but you can see the karnataka there, there there is there was around 50% yield loss almost in kerala also uh, rainfall was almost 2000 2400 mm so it shows how much it is serious so i already already explained fruit rot may lead to bud rot and crown rot which is triple threat in our arikanet growing so you can see the symptoms so i told already you have to correctly diagnose the symptoms so the first photo at the top one small nut we given i given that you can clearly see the water soaked lesions 
so any fungal or bacterial disease first will start with the water soaked lesions then later it will produce its own signs or symptoms it, its fruiting structures so it will start with a small water soaked lesion then from which the fungus will multiply inside the host then at the final stage whatever that white is you are seeing on the nuts it is fruiting bodies phytophthora produced sporangia sporangia is a fruiting structure in which juice spores the fungal spores will be present inside so at the final stage you can see the entire bunch is rotten so the symptom clear it is initial water soaked lesions it will start later it will uh, degrade all the destroy all the host materials like including the husk and everything husk and everything later the fruit or the nut will be mummified you can see it, it will shrink like anything so the entire contents will be uh, rotten so it will show the mummified nature of the fruit finally the nuts will fall in the floor in the ground so you can see this uh, nut fall at the ground and finally you will be remaining with only the empty bunches no nuts so this is the symptoms so as i already told management means integrated disease management we should go always see the farmers uh, will go directly for chemical spray or any fungicide spray which will not serve the solution so the solution if you want we have to follow the integrated disease management procedure correctly like we might have studied in our ug pathology course like starting from cultural control mechanical control physical control biological control then the least should be the chemical control so the i mentioned that one term phytosanitation or field sanitation this is very very important in any management of pest and disease management of any crop not even arcanet so the phytosanitation it includes a lot of uh, points like removal and burning of the infected nuts branches dead branches fallen nuts or everything we should collect and remove and we should take it away from the field and we should uh, just make a pit and we should put it inside and we have to burn it because as i already told that white color whatever we are seeing here is the fruiting structures if it is falling the phytophthora is known to produce a resting structure called oo spore so the sporangia i told which is the asexual spores asexual fruiting structure sporangia inside which juice spore asexual spores will be produced that will frequently infect one nut to other and one plant to other like that like horizontal spread it will go but it has to pass the season once this monsoon is over it has to survive through the season so in that case it will produce sexual spores like oo spore when two opposite mating type will uh, will be interacting then it will produce under favorable conditions it will produce oo spore that oo spore will be in the soil as well as the plant material so that is the reason we have to go for phytosanitation is very 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 important then second the proper drainage facilities so so many gardens uh, uh, they were not following the proper drainage facilities so definitely the fallen nuts will be taken away from the infected palm to the healthy palm as well as it will uh, make infection to the new one and always it is suggested soil test based nutrient management so this is one of the aspect farmer we, uh, we should suggest to the farmer soil test based nutrient management is very important to manage it and we our cpcri uh, colleagues have developed a, a new technology like covering the bunches with polythene covers uh, with proper dimensions which prior to the monsoon if you cover the bunch like earlier arikanad growers used to cover the bunch with arika leaf seed so by inspiring from that our scientists have developed this methodology uh, to cover the bunch prior to the monsoon so that it can be uh, we can avoid the pathogen entry the spore entry from the infected to healthy plants but it is high cost so the cost is the main cost in here so all bunches cannot be covered at uh, by the small and medium scale farmers but it is a useful technology then the main and important chemical management is spraying up 1% bodo mixer so the 1% uh, bodo mixer i will how to prepare and all i will cover at the last so the 1% bodo mixer is the universal solution for the phytophthora disease management in our arikanet coconut or coco plantation crop though there has been several fungicide scheme so now none of the chemicals have met the quality or standard of this bodo mixer in controlling the phytophthora 
and uh, our regular suggestion is at least to two to three times during an interval of 40 to 45 days so if we are spraying during june month then after 40 days second spray then after 40 days third spray and if needed fourth spray we can give so this will definitely control the fruit rot disease in hurricane and recently we have evaluated different fungicides available in the market for the phytophthora disease management so we ended up more than five six seven years research we ended up that one other chemical that is mandipropamide uh, 5 ml per liter so this is an alternative fungicide to bodo mixer as we found but the efficiency is less than that of bodo mixer as well as the cost is high so still the bodo mixer stands first for the chemical management of phytophthora diseases in plant so the second associated disease i mentioned first that is bud rot as well as crown rot so it is also caused by phytophthora midi the same pathogen so the butt, the butt itself, uh, the name itself, it is clear that butt rot. So the butt, met the spindle region, which is uh, which is having the meristematic tissue, will be infected because it is having natural openings. So the pathogen, pathogenic spores may enter via butt, and it will enter to the meristematic tissues and kill the meristematic tissues. Once the meristematic tissues dies, so there is no question of reviving the palms. So it is very clear you can see the rest of the crown region the first picture rest of the crown region is green the bud is infected and when you pull out it, it will come very easily and you will uh, you can smell a very foul odor because the pathogen will enter and it will rot all the internal contents so that you can just smell a foul odor which is given in the down picture like the left side one is healthy and right side one is infected infected bud region and ultimately at the last you can see it if it is infecting a young we can easily pull out if it is infecting your older pumps it will stand like a telephone pole so the bud will be dyed completely and it will stand like a telephone pole which is the last picture you can see so the crop loss due to this bud rot as well as crown rot vary from 5 to 15 percent whereas once we identify it is there we can spray the infected as well as surrounding pumps to manage the spread of the disease so we can easily save the pump so the last itself 15 percent is a huge when you count on a whole pump basis so it is very uh, important to manage the disease at the earlier stage so this is a crown rat it is the name itself saying that but will be green the crown will be infected this crown also having a lot of natural openings so the entire crown region will be infected and it will turn into yellowing the any symptoms I told first it will start water soaked lesions, which we cannot see initial stages because it is high, uh, high tunnel, so we cannot observe it. Then it will later it will turn into yellowing because of the arrestment, arrest of the photosynthetic materials and all. So finally, it will droop and it will die. So here you can see the left uh, first picture, the butt is remaining healthy, the crown is infected. So there is a clear differentiation between butt rot and crown rot. Later, when we cut open the crown region, you can see the different uh, symptoms like water soluble lesions, rotting and all we can absorb so this here also the loss is up to 5 to 15 percent so here i am giving uh, together bud and crown rot integrated disease management once we identify at the earlier stages or initial stages we can easily manage the pump to save the pump so here also the phytosanitation so i told already any disease management or pest management phytosanitation or field sanitation practices is very very important so removal and burning of the infected or dead or diseased nuts, branches or plant parts or palms, and their palm is very, very important. Then second, uh, uh, butter to save, uh, save the button crown rot, 1% bodo mixer has to be sprayed where the infected as well as surrounding trees so that we can avoid the spread. But then when there is a small amount, uh, amount of butter rot is there, like it is infected and it is initial stage. So that we can easily save the pump. That bud region, we can cut it and we can apply 10% bodo paste. That also I will explain how to prepare the paste at the last. So that 10% bodo paste can be applied. And the bud will from the meristematic tissue, the bud will come again. So the pump can be rejuvenated. So here the important thing is we have to notice the bud rot at the earliest stage. Then we can easily rejuvenate the pump. That's why I told one word that regular monitoring of the treated pump is very, very important. Next. To avoid the further infection so here the important thing is uh, i told already in fruit rot there are three sprays of bodo mixer one person bodo mixer we have to give 
but here to avoid button crown rut what we are recommending to the farmers that first spray should be given to the bunches where nut is very important economic part of the plant then second spray we have to give to the bunch as well as bud region and ground region so farmers will not follow these things so practically we are emphasizing the farmers please go for it second spray and third spray you should give along with the bunch or nuts you have to go for button crown to avoid the button crown rot attack Yes, once monsoon is over, like now it is over, September, October. Now farmers are coming frequently with the samples that it is died. We don't know what it is. So it is a clear symptom of butt rot and crown rot. So to avoid that, we have to go for second and third spray should be focused on butt and crown rot. The third disease, the first two diseases, uh, three diseases what I mentioned, root rot, butt rot and crown rot. It is a monsoon disease, monsoon and post monsoon diseases. The, this disease particular disease inflorescence dieback and button setting it is a summer season disease means it will start during january december january and it will continue up to may month so it is also one of the main reason for the low fruits because as the name itself inflorescence dieback dieback means it will dry from the tip to downwards there is the inflorescence from the tip it will start dying then automatically it will come up to the bottom uh, perianth region by that time petiole region by that time the all the nuts will be fallen that's what it is called button setting button is the small fruit so here yield loss up to 60 percent it is already reported here the casual organism is polytotrichum gliosporidus it is a asexual fungi so it is mainly a summer, summer season disease and the right side you see the picture this is the diseased or dead dead inflorescence which was already infected by the inflorescence dieback but it carries spores so it is serve as the primary inoculum for the next season spread. So wherever we are going to the field, we are advising the farmers to remove this. They have to remove this, they have to burn. As I told already, field sanitation is very important. It is an emerging concern due to the climate change now. You can see the different symptoms. As I told already, it is starting from the tip, then it will progress towards the down region. And none of the small nuts or buttons will be remaining. All will be fallen. fallen. So finally, you won't get, the plant will not die because of this, but what about the economic product? So we won't get any economic product. So it has to be managed properly. So here also, I would like to give the IDM practice that phytosanitation or field sanitation is very, very important. And we are, earlier we were advising the farmers to go for mangoza or Zinup spray. But recently, government of India banned these two chemicals. So due to lot of uh, uh, pesticide residues and all. So we have conducted a uh, field trial for the last three years and we have come up with a new uh, chemical for the management of this IDB, that is propiconazole at 0.3%, that is three gram per liter of water. We can spray and control, manage the disease. And another important disease is yellow leaf disease. Actually, uh, this disease is a major concern in our uh, particular area of a small packets of Dakshana Kannada district where the Arikanet farmers are uh, very furious about this disease because uh, this disease is, uh, I, I would say it is a cancer uh, in human like that. Yellow leaf disease is a uh, cancer in plant like that because we cannot manage the disease. Uh, only thing we can manage the palm till we can get the yield. So that's why I mentioned it is a slow decline. It will come slowly, it will kill the immunity of the palm so that the symptoms may appear. Though it is reported in 1914 in Trishur, first it is reported in Kerala side, then it later moved to Karnataka and it is infecting all the stages of the palm. And once the southwest monsoon over, the symptoms will start like yellow leaf disease. The name itself it is saying yellow, yellow color will start. And the, this type of yellowing is typical, not like other general yellowing due to some nutritional deficiency or some other diseases. So I will show the symptoms and then you will come to know. So it will start during September and October and during summer month, the symptoms will disappear. And again, it will come during next September. So like that, it will disappear and reappear again. That is the typical phenomenon of phytoplasma diseases. You can study the literature like phytoplasma diseases will be giving emission and emission of the symptoms. And it is vectored by only copper, which is present in the ecosystem. And it is producing uh, six, seven different type of symptoms. One by one, I will talk. So as I told already, the pathogen is phytoplasma. As to the name phytoplasma, it is a phloem inhabitant. 
and uh, only we can observe under electron microscopy. And uh, the vector is uh, leaf hopper. It is a phloem feeder, so it is very clear that and uh, confirmed this particular vector is transmitting the phytoplasma diseases of this yellow leaf disease. As I told, one by one symptoms. This is foliar yellowing. You can see the tip, where it will the yellowing will start from the tip, but the midrib region will be remain green. But the other inner regions, na that will be looking yellow. So the midrib will be green. The yellowing will start from the tip. It's a typical type of yellow leaf disease symptom. That this is the first symptom. It will start. Then you can see all other foliages will show yellowing, but the midrib will be green. Then finally, the tip will start dying. So that we call the necrosis. Necrosis is a dying of cells. So necrosis will be starting. Then the crown region, particularly that crown region, will be reduced due to the phytoplasma multiplication in the phloem cells. So the crown reduction size is noticed. Then nut shedding. The infected plants will show the shedding of the nuts. And when you cut open, inside that kernel will be discolored, as well as poor root formation and root rotting, as well as root will be blackening at the tips. These are the different symptoms already recorded. So I told already there is a difference between different type of yellowings, like nitrogen nitrogen deficiency, which is uh, causing the general yellowing. You can see the entire. Older leaves is having the, this type of symptoms, but midrib also it is green in uh, yellow in color, but the younger leaves are looking healthy. So that is general yellowing due to nitrogen deficiency. Another one is winter yellowing, which we notice here in the Shana Kannada district. And all winter yellowing, it is also complete yellowing with midrib also will be uh, yellow. Then another one is root graft. Here also midrib will be yellow. And the plant will be looking so slender at the top, like it is a pencil type uh, stem will be seen. Whereas you can see the OLD yellow leaf disease symptoms. Yellowing is typical, starting from the tip as well as midrib will be green. So this is a typical yellowing, uh, which should not be confused with the general yellowing or some other yellowing. So the integrated disease management. So it is very clear. I told already it is like a cancer in humans. So very difficult to control or manage the disease. Only thing we can um, boost up the plant and we can get the yield as much as we can. So these are the different uh, practices. Uh, like uh, we should cut and remove the severely infected farm as it is spreading very slowly. So once we notice some farm is infected, we should cut and remove. Then we should not go for underplanting. Here the farmers will practice underplanting of arecan in disease gardens. Already once garden is diseased, this farm is going to die. Then they will plant small arecanids at the bottom. That they should avoid. Yes, definitely the symptom or the disease will come in the younger farms also. And the soil application, like uh, wherever the disease is there, they will uh, transport the soil, top soil from that one garden to other garden. That they should avoid. Then drainage facility is very very important here. So the water should not be stagnated. Otherwise, the farm will lose its immunity or lose its vigor, so that the farm cannot withstand the adverse conditions. So that should be there. Drainage facility should be improved, as well as uh, soil test based nutrient application. Always we are suggesting we should go for soil test testing at least once in a year, and based on that, the nutrient, whatever the nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, macro or micronutrient should be applied, and uh, it should be applied in split dose like nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. Four to five splits if you give, we can extend the yield. And uh, recently, one of our colleague has been working last six seven years on the mulching aspects of the. Um, garden, uh, so that uh, whatever nutrient we are applying, it will not be washed away. Otherwise, not during monsoon season, uh, there is a peculiar uh, leaching of the nutrients will be happening. So to avoid that mulching of the garden, uh, wherever that OLD severely infected area, we have carried out the experiment, and we came up with the results that mulching the garden with sheets will improve the health of the farms, so that the nutrient will not be leached up. So this is one of the important practices we should follow. So the other disease is basal stem rot. Otherwise, it is called anabi roga because it is farming that anabi, which is called otherwise mushroom, and also it is called as ganoderma wilt because it is similar to the ganoderma wilt in our coconut. So it is also a slow lichen disease. So a distribution is noticed everywhere, and the incidence is up to five to twenty-five percent. The pathogen mainly remains in the soil, and it will infect the 
bottom portion like a root as well as the bottom stem and it will progress slowly towards the above plant parts but it will not cross uh, at least one feet or one and a half feet two feet above the soil level most of the symptoms will be noticed near the soil level you can see the different symptoms In the left side picture is the initial typical initial symptom of the ganoderma you can see small small patches of oozing up to at least one to 1.5 feet we can see it so this palm not formed anabi because it is the initial stage once anabi formed the disease almost reached it near maturity period so we should be very clear initial phase of symptoms once we observe we should treat the palm to save it so this once anabi formed like in the middle pictures it is very difficult to manage the palm but still our colleagues at kasar kodu they could able to recover by applying lot of uh, integrated disease management uh, aspects but oh, it is always prevention is better than cure so we should go uh, keep monitoring the palm continuously and once initial symptoms we notices we should go back and this drooping of the leaves also one of the symptoms so it is strictly uh, we should go for the soil test based newton applications because many of the farmers are applying nutrients in excess quantity so are many of the farmers are not applying potash which is the main ingredient main uh, nutrient needed for the plantation crops especially this type of nut like coconut arecane nut cocoa which is farming fruits it is having majorly potassium so the plant has to take up majorly potassium also it is one of the important component of disease resistance so many farmers are applying less potassium will not uh, save the palm so soil test based nutrient application is very important here also wherever the drainage facility is poor like water stagnation is there like uh, low laying areas or where that paddy converted arecanet fields this is the major problem because the paddy converted fields they will fill the only top soil up to 1 to 2 feet of the top soil but remaining will be the clay soil or whatever uh, paddy grown soil will be there so the water will not move away from the plot it will be remaining there only so anywhere the inoculum will come from outside definitely it will multiply in this favorable environment and it will improve so that improving drainage facility is very 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 important in this basal stem rot and uh, there is a one more uh, aspect of trichoderma enriched neem cake application 1 to 2 kg per palm per year this is very important because um, trichoderma as we know it is a beneficial fungi or by, by control agents which will um, which will uh, arrest the growth of the ganoderma lucidum fungus is a basidium mycetes so the strychoderma we should go to enrich in the neem cake like neem cake also uh, very important in root proliferation activity it is known that it will produce new roots so when root is infected neem cake will help in root proliferation and above that the trichoderma will multiply and which will, which will save the roots so we have to multiply the trichoderma in the neem cake and we have to apply in the soil and the chemical management we should go for hexagonazole uh, soil application yes i told already this pores will or the disease is soil bound so we have to go for soil drenching and the root feeding of the hexagonazole is advised then these are the minor diseases like leaf spot and leaf blight it will be available each and every garden where arecanet is growing so this we cannot avoid leaf spot the name itself it is a small spot later it may form and it may coalesce to form blights so blight also a typical uh, blightening symptoms we will notice and uh, it is reported from young seedlings to older palms so different kind of pathogens associated with this like starting from form of this colletotrichum philosticta alternaria so different pathogens are associated you can see the symptoms like the first three is leaf spot typically leaf spot it will start then sorry first three is leaf blighted typically it will start small small spots then it will coalesce to form blights the bottom is three is the leaf blight sir leaf spot you can see small small isolated patches later it may coalesce to form blights once after isolation and confirmation only we can say what is the pathogen associated with the symptoms so here also the integrated disease management is phytosanitation removing and burning of the infected leaves then we have to provide summer season uh, summer shade actually many of the farmers not following this so colletotrichum and all these pathogens will aggravate during the summer season so we should go for the summer season shading then as i already mentioned mangoes of this uh, banned so here also we can go for propiconazole spray to manage the leaf spot 
and one more term i mentioned emerging and re emerging diseases of arcanet here there are two major diseases recently we are reporting last 2 3 years one is that root rot disease another is bacterial strep disease so the root rot disease first we noticed with 3 years back in uh, some gardens of arcanet where initial yellowing of the leaves older leaves followed by uh, younger leaves also and drying finally it is drooping yellowing and wilting we can say drooping and wilting of the leaves finally the palm will die this is mostly reported during the younger stages of the plants like it starting from the young seedling 6 months old to up to 5 years we noticed you can see the root rot like the root will be completely rotten the right side is healthy root you can see how it is healthy the left side you can see uh, different extends uh, stages of rotting will be there when we cut open the stem you can see small to like only the root region is rotten in the left side photo in the middle you can see it is extended up to the stem so automatically the water movement and uh, nutrient movement will be arrested and the uh, plant will die so this is a different samples we received from different areas and we finally finally we have seen that the fungus fusarium is associated with the uh, particular disease and we have uh, microscopically confirmed that it is farming micro as well as macro conidia and chlamydospores chlamydospores you might have studied in your uh, course that it is a resting structure formed during the adverse conditions and the infected root region uh, were given for the analysis of nematodes and we have found the pan parasitic nematodes in the last picture you can see the stylet present in the mouth parts of the nematode stylet is the typical character for the pan parasitic nematodes so that we also we have observed and the different gardens we started during last years so the here also the adak management bias this is a new disease we have to conduct some management trial for this so the adak management trial as uh, I, uh, we suggest is we have to go for the field sanitation that is very clear any disease you should be field sanitized then uh, for the chemical management Uh, we are suggesting carbendazim plus mango soap it is a combination of fungicide uh, we have to go for soil drenching at 0.1% then 10 days after that we have to go for carbosulfan which is an amethyst uh, at 0.1% then after 10 days we have to go for trichodroma enriched neem cake at the rate of 1 kilo 500 g to 1 kilo per farm as i already mentioned the neem cases neem cake is having root proliferation activity and it will reduce many organic acids and all which will arrest the pathogen and the trichodroma will help in uh, plant growth promotion and so the second disease is bacterial strep disease which is very recently last year uh, last two years we are seeing in the shimoga tract of karnataka wherever that shimoga tract of arcanet uh, growing tracts in karnataka and now it is almost uh, started spreading uh, badravadi and all so the symptoms is like uh, it will uh, drying and drooping of the leaves bottom leaves and when we pull the spindle region it will come up very easily and as like bud rot and when we cut open that foul smell we can see and the odors and foul smells we can see it is uh, when we went for the observation we thought that it could be due to bud rot but when we went it was almost like it is it was during february month we went so then we have visited many gardens with our hod and then uh, we came up that uh, based on the symptoms we came up that it could be due to bacteria so as you can see the left side typically that uh, tip it is having some brownish spot here it initial symptoms might be water soluble lesion later it will turn into brownish spots so the cells may be started dying then it will slowly progress and in the bottom you can see the bacterial oozes oozes means you may be knowing the bacterial cells will produce the hexopolysaccharides which will produce the oozing type of colonies so finally the typical drying pattern is noticed and it will can die the palm the severe stages so we could able to get uh, bacteria which is called pantova it is a gram negative bacteria and we could able to successful do, prove the pathogenic pathogenicity Uh, by inoculating on the healthy host and we could able to get the symptoms and from that we could able to re-isolate the bacteria again and it was confirmed as pantova species still the further studies is going on in the nearby areas collecting more number of samples to uh, study this uh, diversity of the pathogen actually uh, during uh, our visit we have noticed a typical phenomena that arcanet is growing as a crop intercrop in the field crops like uh, cotton maize 
ginger they are growing annually and they are harvesting where i can it remain is a as a perennial it will remain same it will be there in the field only and this uh, cotton maize and ginger already known to be infected by n number of bacterial diseases so there should be a shift host shift from the maize or cotton or ginger from uh, these crops to the hurricane it should be that that's why uh, the pandova is spreading uh, very seriously in hurricane and moreover it is non traditional area of hurricane growing so farmers should not extend the hurricane grow uh, cropping in the non traditional areas and as it is a bacterial disease copper based fungicides will uh, help in reducing the spread of the nature of the uh, diseases also phytosanitation practice are already mentioned so it also should be strictly followed so now coming to cocoa cocoa is also very important it is a chocolate tree so it is uh, main uh, by product is chocolates and it is very clear our de demand is more than what we are supplying so every year we are importing more than 50 to 60% of cocoa beans from foreign country so this is the pest and disease profile of our cocoa so here also i will i would like to classify it is into major diseases as well as minor diseases and emerging or emerging diseases so major diseases it is very very serious disease in cocoa that is black pod and then second is stem canker i told in arikanet session that uh, fruit rot bud rot crown rot they are associated diseases here also black pod and stem canker these two are associated diseases if in any garden if we notice black pod definitely stem canker will be there so it is an associated disease and then the third one is cherry rot caused by colotrichum gliosporidus and then the fourth one is vasculastic dieback it is now emerging very seriously and then other diseases are minor diseases which we no need to look up uh, then there is one disease like emerging disease like dieback disease which we noticed during uh, our visit in andhra and kasaragod kerala area this is now emerging as a uh, new disease i will cover one by one black pod all stages starting from a small cheril cheril is known as small young pod of cocoa so small cheril to the older one so yield loss is almost 10 to 20% and in especially in dakshina kannada where the uh, rainfall is more like more than 3000 to 4000 mm rainfall we are receiving every year so during the southwest monsoon it is more severe in high rainfall areas so here also i told already any disease symptoms will start with small water soaked leaves then later it may turn into brown or black or any different colors and later it will extend to infect the entire pod so as the lesion advances and you can see the typical uh, phytophthora sp uh, sporangial characters which which we are seeing like whitish color in the brownish area that whitish color appears means phytophthora started producing mycelia as well as sporangia which is the asexual fruiting structure of phytophthora which contains lot of juice spores as already explained then more than 10 to 15 days it is enough uh, it will cover the entire pod and the entire tree because the monsoon uh, in southwest monsoon here this area is very severe so it will easily spread from one tree to other tree and when we cut open the um, pod we can see clearly the economic part of the cocoa which is called beans is uh, rotten and the, which is of no use now so we have to manage the disease by early prophylactic control measures so the source i told already phytophthora is uh, off season survival in the soil region as a woo spores so it may be surviving in the soil or rotten parts or rotten canker trees so rain splashes will help in spread of the disease from soil it will jump like a, they will call as a monkey jump so it will jump the spores will jump from nearby parts which is adjacent to the soil from there it will start infecting all the parts so here you can see vertical spread which two parts are adjacent it will spread easily here it is vertical spread the top most part is infected the down part is also infected the downwards part so it will spread vertically also so here once the monsoon is favorable or that we can say that environment is favorable a susceptible host is available the pathogen will do uh, heavy damage in the crop you can see the different symptoms 
So here also ID ma'am, yeah, integrated disease management. I, I will emphasize again, field sanitation practices is very, very important. And uh, proper spacing between the plants is very highly recommended. Because if you plant very close, so there is a chance of uh, uh, creating the humidity. Again, microclimate will be very favorable for the pathogen and spread is uh, also very favorable for the pathogen. And here also spraying of Bodo mixer 1% is very well recommended and it is giving success also. So here also uh, three spray during the monsoon. One is prophylactic before monsoon followed by 40, 45 days second spray and then followed by 40, 45 days third spray. If needed, fourth spray can be given. Then stem can I told it is also associated disease caused by the same pathogen. The external symptoms you can see, it is like a canker lesions you can see. So it will start with small uh, appearance, grayish to brownish, little bit uh, lesions it will start. Then later it will extend in the bark region. And if you cut open the bark, you can see the clear uh, internal contents also started rotting. And uh, yeah, that is brown liquid also oozing out from the bark. So the internal contents also started disintegration. So uh, it is seen near to the soil region also. So here also integrated disease management, field sanitation practice is very important. Here, if you notice the symptoms earlier stage, we can cut the uh, diseased parts and we can apply Bodo paste, which will easily control the or manage the disease spread. Here, in the procedure explains how to do it. Then another thing is, um, CPCRA cast record division of crop production, they have developed a trichoderma kairpith cake. Like kairpith, they will make like a cake, which they multiply trichoderma, a beneficial biocontrol agent. So this is having high antagonistic potential against the patoptera. So the right, uh, but top is the controlled uh, kairpith cake, by bottom is the trichoderma enriched kairpith cake. What we have to do, we have to make small uh, patch in the infected area, but you can see the clear water so good reason. There you have to keep the trichotoma kaira pith cake and you have to tie with the locally available material like karika sheet or anything. Then later, after some days, you can clearly see the multiplication of the trichotoma at the bottom pictures. So it will take care and it will control the spread of the stem canker disease. And another technology that CPCRA has developed, uh, trichoderma kairpith uh, cake based planting. Like uh, in the poly bags, when we are do going for the sowing, there is a small well type uh, kairpith cake is developed, which is already mass multiplied with trichoderma. So if we keep it on the uh, top of the poly bags and we have to go for the uh, sowing of the seeds, it is like one bio priming technique, like seed priming. Once the seed will germinate, the available trichoderma will colonize the roots and it is serving as the uh, plant growth promotion activity and it will avoid all kinds of seedling diseases as well as other uh, phytophthora diseases or soil bone diseases caused by phytophthora. So the other disease, third disease is cheryl rot, which is also called the cheryl wilt. Uh, it is a summer season disease. It will start during only March, April, May. The summer season only we can see. The symptoms, it is very clear. Uh, it will start uh, normally as a small, as I told, water soap, chlorotic spot, and then later it will turn into different colors, and finally it will cover the entire part. You can see the shrunken and mummy wet fruit at the uh, right side, and the healthy fruit at the left side, cheryl. So here also the management practice is field sanitation practice, IDM practice, then followed by carbon dosing spray, or mangoza. Mangoza is recently banned, so we are advising for carbon dosing or bodo spray. Bodo also will work, but during summertime, Bodo will cause phytotoxicity. So we are suggesting go for carbon dioxide spray, 0.1%. So the another one is vasculastic dieback. It is a very major concern in Kerala. Actually, nowhere else it is reported other than Kerala. Only Kerala, some isolated packets, it is there. So the name itself, it is very clear, vasculastic dieback. So the dieback symptom starts uh, from the tip to down as well as vascular streaks. So the vascular region is infected due to this uh, disease. So the symptom will start like this. When you take a seedling, so the top by leaving the first leaf, second or third leaf will show yellowing. This is the typical pattern of this particular disease. First leaf will be remaining as such healthy. The second or third leaf will show first yellow. Then it will fall. Then slowly it will spread to the other forms, other leaves 
and finally all will droop and die so when we cut open the petiole you can see the typical marking that the discoloration of the vascular region so which is a clear symptom of the disease here it is reported only in kerala so we should be very much aware that quarantine we should be follow strictly that we should not purchase any seedling from the kerala side to other places so fairly sanitation practice is very very important here also and bodo mixer will give better control uh, so recently propiconosol or hexaconosol also found to be effective in managing this residue method so the other diseases are minor important just i will uh, keep skipping it like charcoal part rot it is a summer season disease you can see it is similar to black part but it will come during summer season we can clearly identify it and we can uh, manage it by spraying one percent bodo then another is surface cyst is built it, it is noted in isolated packets where the plant is not properly treated with nutrients or fertilizers means wherever the plant is having stress like water stagnated condition or not applied proper nutrients and where uh, it is noticed uh, this type of disease may come and here the typical pattern is uh, the ambrosia beetle that is xyliborus beetle also associated with the disease wherever the diseased palms is noticed uh, the stem region we found the typical uh, colonization of this beetle so this two combination is killing the palm so here also management we have to go for field sanitation and we have to uh, go for soil drenching with fungus like this soil drenching with the combination of fungus two different group of fungus we treated with we are suggesting carbon dioxide plus mangoes by making trenches and so that we can avoid the spread of the um, disease from one tree to other tree. so we have to apply in the soil the pink disease which is a minor importance uh, pink is powdery mass will be seen on the stem of the uh, cocoa tree so it also can be managed by spraying one person powder then white thread blight where kerala side and all it is very severe and problematic but uh, it is uh, it can be managed by uh, shared regulation and proper control then kushan gulls there are different type of gulls appearing in these plants it was initially thought that bacteria is associated then uh, some studies show that fungi is associated so still the etiology is unknown no one has proven the pathogenicity so the etiology is still unknown and then another is seedling dieback this is a seedling diseases dieback i told already dieback is starting uh, drying from tip to downward so it is a seedling dieback is a disease of nursery so the symptoms you can see clearly the right side left side is the healthy seedling uh, when it is grown the other four side in the right side is the how uh, damping of and the root rotting is seen in the uh, seedlings so different soil one pathogens like phytophthora pithium rhizoctonia of fusarium is associated so it will cause mostly damping up type of diseases so here the integrated disease management is one uh, we have to go for seed treatment or bio priming we have to go with the bio fungicide like uh, trichoderma or uh, any other uh, as well as seed treatment with chemicals so we have to go for that otherwise soil application of bio control agents or fungicides we have to go for it. the one emerging disease which recently we have reported the dieback disease of coco recently our, uh, our colleagues have gone to andhra west godavari district where they have found oil palm plus coco gardens oil palm is a main crop coco grown as end crop in that so they have found a typical dieback symptom of coco the seedlings and small uh, plants so like the symptom is uh, starting very clear starting from initial yellowing that it is drying from tip to downward when we cut open we can see the necro necrosis at the tip where that petiole is attached and uh, in the twigs we can see the typical fungal uh, sporulations are black and white colors and later the entire plant will die and fall out. so later they have isolated the fungus as lesio diplodia theobroma based on the cultural microscopic as well as molecular confirmation and pathogenicity also they have proved so any disease pathogenicity we should prove it then only we can establish as a new disease or pathogen so up to this here also the management we are suggesting for go for one person bodo mixer we are suggesting bodo mixer is the universal solution for the management of many of the disease so here the bodo mixer how to prepare uh, so the bodo mixer is a combination of two particular products like one is copper sulfate the another one is lime so lime can be available in any different forms like hydrator lime or burnt lime so 
set of stuff which will give you one percent so both should be prepared separately like in separate containers overnight before like tomorrow if i want to spray one day before we have to soak the copper sulfate separately as well as lime separately so the hydrated lime is having already water so no need to uh, go for uh, prior day soaking so the uh, burnt lime we can soak priorly in hot water one day before and we can keep overnight next day we have to uh, properly mix it and both should be added simultaneously so that that flocculation we can avoid otherwise farmers some farmers will follow copper sulfate at the top or uh, lime at the bottom that also can be followed but both simultaneously can be mixed in the remaining quantity of water like uh, 8 liters like 10 liters we are soaking here uh, one day before like 10 liters copper sulfate 10 liter uh, lime then it can be added in 8 liters of water and we have to properly mix it and in between in between we have to check the ph with the litmus paper so the ph should be 7 to 8 like neutral to slightly alkaline uh, it can be checked with use of clear knife also so that that rust should not form if rust is forming copper we added more then we have to go for applying lime mode so like that finally the solution is prepared with the help of ph paper as well as the knives and finally it has to be sprayed and it has to, the bodo mixer has to be prepared very fresh and we should not use uh, older or more than 4 hours we should not keep it immediately it has to be processed and it has to be prepared and sprayed like in our uh, coco we have to go for mist spraying in arikana also we have to go for a mist spraying uh, bodo paste so instead of 100 liters like 1 kg copper sulfate 1 kg lime in 10 liters of water will give you paste form so that can be applied whenever we are going for pruning of coco trees or any other diseased parts we are removing that we have to apply the bodo paste and the mist spraying is always advisable so that it will cover in a mist form the entire diseased area can be covered crop canopy area so these are the some of the books for the reference thank you hello sir thank you Uh, thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's uh, marathon now because three crops. <laughs> you have done. You have done very well. Uh, actually. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you. Uh, in between, as I uh, said, there was for five minutes there was a problem here, but then. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I, yes, uh, since uh, there it's a connection is there. No, no, yes, no worries. Yes, And recording also it is smooth. Actually, one since it is in the cloud, you still recording will be uh, on. Oh, no worries. So friends. Uh, You may raise questions now, please. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, the boro mixture will be causing some toxicity during summer period. You said. Uh, how yes, is yes, it? sir. No, that uh, copper particle when you apply during the summer time, summer time it will cause uh, burning of the tissues if you spray. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, another uh, general doubt, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir uh, could you please tell how we can differentiate the algal rust and the uh, paxinia rust do you have any idea paxinia rust actually you see that algal rust uh... hello yes sir so see paxinia rust is uh, typically caused by the uh, paxinia which is a uh, fungus Sanjay. algae is not uh, algal rust na you can see that rust red rust you are telling na mango yes, or bova it will come yes, so sir. that pustules only different so rust you can see that field crop it will cause pustules it will not yes. be bigger it will be like black or brown it depends upon the name na yellow rust or black rust so yes. it is typically pustules and that fruiting bodies will be seen in the post itself but algal rust na it is like uh, you can see the color essence in that like orange color may be there or any color and it will be continue not a particular pustule type you can see oh, okay sir thank you
any more questions? Or you can write in the chat box also. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, for the case of a uh, bad rot in the uh, Arica nut, can we go for the uh, application of COC, copoxy chloride, uh, yeah, as we in the case of uh, coconut? Yeah, we can go. COC is already established in coconut, but Arica nut, no one has tried so far. So just uh, pathogen is same, we can go, but mostly you see, I told already, bud rot will come only when monsoon is over. Like it may end up in September and October, November, December, it may come. That time Bodo uh, application will not cause any problem. But coconut, it may extend beyond uh, summertime also, it may come bud rot and all. So I cannot, it is not noticed during summertime. So that's why COC, they may be suggesting, as I told, that copper concentration may be less. That's why they may be using copper oxychloride. But here also, we can suggest copper oxychloride. There is no problem in that. Sir, uh, one more general note. Uh, sir, in case of oil palm, generally, this uh, COC is not uh, recommended. Uh, so why, sir? That I don't know. They might have studied during uh, experiment. Now. They might have concluded like that. Yes, I don't know. That, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, sir, at what stage we can observe this uh, butter disease severe incidence? Sir? Severe that incidence? Is... What stage okay. you are asking? Uh? Uh, plant growth stage. Sir. No, so, see, I told already, rainy season you cannot notice any butter. Only fruit rot can be noticed. Once mm. the monsoon is over, the pathogen now, no further fruit is available for it to infect. And mm. it wants new host, or, uh, new uh, uh, parts to infect. So slowly it will move on and it will go to butt. So it will start during September itself, October, November, even up to December, we can notice and I can it. Severe, you can see during November and December. Now also farmers, now it is almost November. Farmers started sending so many mails or WhatsApp and all messages we are receiving. It is okay. very clear. Now it is severe now, November and December. So mm -hmm. spray should be done during September itself to save the palm. Otherwise, now it is very difficult. Okay. Sir, what is what about the cost of the Boda mixture, sir? Cost of Boda mixture is, I think, less than 500 rupees only. Whereas 1 kg copper sulfate and 1 okay. kg lime, which is uh, easily available in the local market and water we can get from our own garden. Okay. Other fungi sets which cost more than 2,000 rupees for the particular spray, for one spray. Okay, okay. And then, thanks. Hmm, thanks. Uh, uh, Dr. Tawa, there is a question in the chat box. Can you? I have seen, sir, how we can uh, differentiate yeah. yellow wing disease of Arikanat. Actually, I have clearly mentioned the symptoms which I given general yellow wing, how to differentiate general yellow wing. See, general yellow wing mostly will appear on the older leaves of the any plant. That's what nitrogen, typical nitrogen deficiency uh, will cause. But the yellow wing is uniform to the entire palms. So you can identify the all older leaves will be showing the yellowing type of symptoms, including the midrib. But here, the arena yellowing midrib will be green because I told already it is a phytoplasma and it is a subviral agent, like it is like uh, obligate parasite. So only the tip yellowing will start, and only the blades, leaf blades only will be having the yellowing. Only midrib will be green in color. So that is the typical pattern of yellowing. You can differentiate. Uh, from nutrient deficiency allowing, where the entire leaf will be allowing. Uh, hello, sir. Mm, hello. Sir, is one general question about the yes, outcome yes. topic. Uh, mm -hmm. Nowadays, when I uh, big news about the consumption of arecanata, other mm -hmm. cancer that is uh, mm -hmm. carcinogenic, uh, sir, is there any uh, research is going on? on that, sir? Actually, you see, lot of researches already they have completed and they have conducted. See, aricanet is having one particular uh, content, aricolin. So that is only the people are targeting. Actually, aricanet consumption is very good for health. Even medical uh, department also they have approved. When we consume, uh, consume aricanet with the tobacco, tobacco is the main culprit here. When we consume with tobacco, so tobacco is causing something which is misinterpreted with aricanet actually. So in our earlier days onwards, we ancestors, we are using aricanet, betel wine, leaves and the chunna. So we used to, lime and all we used to have. So that is very good for health, for it will improve your digestion and everything. So here it should not be confused. No cancer is causing because of aricanate. It is good for health. But, but that aricoline content should be less 
while we are consuming that's why we are using the processed nuts in that one aricoline content will be less but aricoline also will alone never cause any cancer no reports are there only the people started publishing uh, some unnecessary publications about this and creating wrong information about aricoline consumption okay sir thank hmm. you no to add to that actually we have uh, conducted a survey also preliminary survey from the vital station itself so uh, we could not find any direct causal relation uh, between the sericanate consumption and uh, the health the detrimental health uh, aspects and uh, one more thing as dr tawa rightly pointed out uh, the gutka content or pan based any pan based value added products it is 70 to 80% is uh, tobacco and rest only 10 to 20 percent maybe less than that only are connected that to low quality are connected so uh, based on that we cannot uh, come up with any conclusion that this is because 80 percent is a tobacco based product as such uh, there is no as uh, he rightly uh, said there is no relation and uh, it, it can be consumed as a healthy alternative as a masticator for the masticatory purpose Any more questions, friends? No, sir. Hello. Uh, he said no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so from his side, no, Dhanraj. So, uh, so I think uh, if uh, there is no more questions, uh, we will end the session. Uh, uh, my hearty. gratitude to dr r tawar prakash pandya for his uh, nice elaboration on these two crops very crisp and very uh, specific and uh, within time uh, excellent and even the elaborations on the questions also i mean the way he answered and still uh, we are ready to answer questions uh, if you have any uh, this is something you know every class i Uh, no, just press them to ask questions. Yes, Asking questions is a, a habit that has to be inculcated at this right age. Otherwise, you never ask questions. No. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So asking questions is a habit, and you you utilize this kind of a platform. Like yes, come up and ask whether even if a, a question which is which is no uh, which is of no relevance, but if you have a real curiosity about asking that, you can ask. You can that way you can uh, learn the. Art of articulation also. So this is a platform. We again classes are there, but then make a point that at least one question uh, you generate so that you will concentrate uh, effectively uh, to uh, pay attention to the class also. Uh, so uh, thank you once again, uh, Dr. Tawa. Thank you so much, and, uh, my dear participants. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, from my side, I will end the meeting. Yes, Tawa and Basan, Tawa, I will send uh, those pictures to your WhatsApp. Yes, sir. Uh, you can uh, just observe that. If any doubt they are having, we can uh, circulate our email ID also, sir. My email ID, so that they can. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think I will. To put it in the chat box because yes, because sir. we will be having all the resource persons com common. I mean, this yes, uh, way's uh, email and contact number we will share. Yes, sir. Uh, so thank thanks a lot, Dada. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.